Our planet is home to over 34,000 species of fish, and only about 500 of them give birth to live young. Most of the live-bearing fish that we know of are saltwater fish, such as sharks and rays. However, many of the more popular freshwater tropical fish, such as guppies, mollies, platies, and swordtails, all give birth to live young rather than laying eggs. And it's a generally held belief that ancient fish reproduce by laying eggs rather than by giving birth to live young. Nonetheless, as a general rule, most female fish lay eggs, which are then fertilized externally by the male who releases a cloud of sperm over the eggs. But somewhere in the course of fish evolution, a few species began to change their reproductive strategy. Instead of the female laying her eggs and then having the male fertilize them externally, the ancestors of the modern-day guppy began to retain the eggs inside their body and then have the male fertilize them internally through the act of copulation. After mating, the fertilized eggs are retained inside the body while the embryos grow. Then, when the babies are fully developed and ready to survive on their own, the female gives birth to live young. However, in order for the guppy to change its reproductive strategy from laying eggs to bearing live young, the male guppy would need to find a way to get his sperm inside the female guppy in order to fertilize her eggs internally. And rather than develop an entirely new organ to accomplish the task, the guppy adapted an already existing body part to function in a brand new way. Because from an evolutionary perspective, it's faster and far more efficient to modify an already existing body part for a different use than it is to create an entirely new body part from scratch. So, the anal fin of the male guppy has been specially modified so that it can be used to deliver the male's sperm directly to the female's genital opening during mating. And now that the male guppy had a way to transmit his sperm to the inside of the female, there was still one more important hurdle to clear. Guppies had to change the way their sperm was packaged because fish sperm is typically released in a loose cloud of free-swimming sperm known as milt. And this is not an effective way to move the sperm from the male to the female during internal fertilization. This problem was solved by a grouping large numbers of individual sperm together in tightly packed bundles known as spermatozoogmata. So now, instead of being released as a loose cloud of sperm, the guppy's sperm is concentrated into these dense bundles, making it far easier to transfer the male's sperm to the female during copulation. And, on average, there are about 22,000 sperm per bundle, so when a female guppy mates with a male guppy, she can store enough sperm to continue having babies for several months without ever having to mate again. In a moment, we'll take a close look at the modified anal fin of the male guppy to see how it really works. But first, let's familiarize ourselves with a bit of guppy anatomy. This is the unmodified anal fin of a female guppy. At birth, the anal fins of both the male and the female look the same, but when the babies are about five weeks old, the male's anal fin begins to change. This is a five-week-old male guppy, and his anal fin is now in the early stages of changing into a gonopodium. These lines on the anal fin are called rays, and the guppy has nine of these rays on its anal fin. These rays will grow and change their shape over the course of the next three weeks to transform this ordinary anal fin into an incredibly ingenious way to transfer sperm from the male guppy to the female. This is fin ray number one, followed by two, three, four, five, and so on. Fin ray number three is the first one to show a dramatic change in its size and shape. 
So let's now jump ahead one week and see what the anal fin looks like at six weeks of age. This is a six week old male guppy and his anal fin has definitely changed a lot in the past week. And as you can see the third anal fin ray is much larger than it was last week. Another sign of a male developing a gonopodium is the occasional flexing of the anal fin that's commonly seen in male guppies. And now we'll jump ahead another week and take a look at the anal fin of this male guppy when he's seven weeks old. This is the same male one week later and the gonopodium is now really beginning to take shape. The third, fourth, and fifth rays of the anal fin are the ones that are of greatest functional significance in creating the gonopodium. This gonopodium is still forming and there are still a lot of changes to come in the next week. Be sure to take note of this reddish area at the tip of the anal fin. I'm not sure why it's there, but there it is. And now, for comparison, let's take a quick look at the anal fin of a seven-week-old female guppy to see how they differ. This female's anal fin has not undergone any major changes, and the dark spots that make up her gravid spot are clearly visible, so it's easy to tell that this is a female. In fact, you can spot a female guppy sooner than a male by looking for the gravid spot on the females, which becomes visible in as little as three weeks of age. Now let's jump ahead one week and look at the gonopodium of a sexually mature guppy. At eight weeks of age, the anal fin of the male guppy has been completely transformed to become a fully functional gonopodium. Rays one and two are right here. And this is fin ray number three. This is the part that has changed the most since we first started looking at the anal fin. This is fin ray number four. This ray is bifurcated, which is just a fancy way of saying that it splits into two or forks. And finally, this is fin ray number five. As you'll see in a minute, the guppy's gonopodium is actually a funnel to move packets of sperm from the male to the female during internal fertilization. This funnel is formed when the gonopodium moves forward, which causes fin ray number three to fold over and touch fin ray number five. This folding of the gonopodium creates a tube which allows the packets of sperm to move along what's known as the transitory groove, which runs right here along fin ray number four. And this little bit right here is called the palp, and we're not really sure what its function is. It might help to guide the gonopodium to the female's genital opening, or even help to hold the packets of sperm at the tip of the gonopodium before they're passed to the female. No one really knows. On an interesting side note, characteristics of the gonopodium are used to help distinguish between closely related species of live bearers, and the palp on a pure endler live bearer will extend beyond the end of the gonopodium. This difference in the size of the palp is one of the key differences between Endler's live bearers and guppies. And now, just for a quick comparison, let's have a look at what this male's anal fin looked like just three weeks ago. A lot has changed since then, and this eight-week-old male is now ready to breed. And now let's have a look at the guppy's gonopodium in action so that we can see how it's used to transfer sperm during mating. As the gonopodium moves forward and to the side, it begins to fold and form a tube, and the further forward it goes, the more the tube tightens.
This fin is the ventral fin, and there are two of them, one on each side of the body. The male guppy will use one of his ventral fins to support the gonopodium as he brings it all the way forward. Here he swings his gonopodium forward and to the right. Then he uses his right ventral fin to support the gonopodium as he pushes it upwards. Then he switches sides. He swings his gonopodium forward and to the left and uses his left ventral fin to push the gonopodium upwards, which makes perfect sense because male guppies approach their potential mates from below. This flexing of the gonopodium, even in the absence of a female guppy, may indicate that this young male is conditioning his newly formed gonopodium for future use. And it's possible that these stretching exercises help train the gonopodium to fold properly and form a complete tube when being used to transfer the male's sperm. And this flexing behavior continues throughout the male's life, so it must be important to flex the gonopodium every once in a while to keep it in good working order. Nonetheless, there are a lot of things that we don't understand about guppy reproduction, and that says a lot because they're one of the most intensely studied species of fish on the planet. When the gonopodium is brought forward, the palp changes its position from the bottom to the top. When guppies mate, it happens in the blink of an eye, and the pair's genitals are in contact for only 20 to 50 milliseconds, making it one of the fastest copulations known. So the timing is very important, and the transfer of sperm happens very quickly. And now, let's do a quick review. The switch from laying eggs to bearing live young made it necessary to use internal fertilization, which made it necessary for the male guppies to develop a gonopodium and specially packaged sperm. However, in order to get close enough to give the female his specially packaged sperm, the male guppy had to attract the female, which inevitably leads to courtship, the competition for mates, sex, and best of all, the development of the male guppy's rainbow of beautiful colors and patterns. However, not all live bearers have beautiful colors. In fact, both species of the ancient fish called the coelacanth are live bearers, and they're not very colorful at all. And neither are sharks. However, I'd like to point out that sharks don't have a gonopodium. Because instead of modifying their anal fin, male sharks have two modified ventral fins known as claspers, and they work in a similar way to the guppy's gonopodium. And just like guppies, female sharks can store sperm for long periods of time. In fact, in some species of sharks, the females have been known to store a male's sperm for several years before using it to fertilize their eggs and then give birth to live young. The benefits of bearing live young are numerous, and the guppy's ability to give birth to fully developed babies is just one of the many things that we have in common with these amazing little fish. And that's it for this presentation. Thanks for watching, and have a spectacular day.